Thank you. Good afternoon. The Senate Committee on Natural Resources will now come to order. Members and presenters, please remember to mute your microphone when you are not speaking. At this time, uh, I will not call on our secretary to please call the roll. Senator Brooks. Here. Senator Goykachia. Here. Senator Hansen. Here. Senator Scheibel. Here. Chair Donate. I'm here. Thank you. So, being that we have reached the quorum, we can now proceed with our meeting. So, welcome everyone to the Senate Committee on Natural Resources. Again, um, as I've done with previous meetings, I just want to go over for those of you that are watching on how you can participate and explain how our virtual committee meetings will work for this, since considering that this process is new for a lot of us. As you know, the legislative building is currently closed to the public, so all committee meetings will be heard and held virtually. This means that committee members, staff, and everyone else will participate either through Zoom video conference or by telephone. However, there are various ways that members of the public can engage with us and participate throughout this process. As in previous sessions, all committee related information is available on the Nevada Electronic Legislative Information System or commonly referred to as NELIS. There are four ways that you can participate and engage with our committee. And this includes registering to participate in a committee meeting through the new NELIS system, which places you in line to testify on a bill or provide public comment during the meeting, submitting written testimony to the committee's email address, sharing your opinion via the legislature opinions application on Nellis or viewing the committee meeting online through Nellis or on the legislative's YouTube channel. To testify on a bill or provide public comment during the 2021 legislative session, members of the public must first register for the meeting that you would like to participate in. Committee meetings are listed in several places on Nellis and to register, simply click on participate button near the meeting date and time and then fill out the required information that is needed from you. And once this registration is submitted, you will be able to receive a confirmation screen with the details on how to participate and the meeting ID. Just as a note, um, while meeting registration is required to participate, it does not guarantee you a chance to be able to speak. And this will pertain to some of the bills that we'll be hearing today. When you're on the phone line, please pay attention to which bill is being considered and which ones are on the meeting agenda, which will be prompted by BPS so that you can know which keys to press at the right time. Today, we'll be going out of order um, and we'll be listening to Senate bills 23 and 52 on the agenda and BPS staff will be able to call on you to speak by the last three digits of your phone number. And of course, detailed instructions on how to participate in our committee meetings are available on the help page listed at the top of every page on Nellis. And should you ever need any assistance, always feel free to contact um, us and my committee members and a lot of this information can be provided on the committee's agendas and minutes. So again, please note that we'll be taking the agenda items out of order today to accommodate with uh, the schedule of presenters. And now I would like to pivot towards hearing Senate Bill 52. So today our first presentation will be on the topic of dark sky designations. I'm actually really excited for this bill to come forward. And I know that many of my colleagues and members of the public are also eager to hear about this. Um, for me, I'm a huge fan of anything about space, and for me, it's all entertaining, whether it's astronauts or astronomy. And as a quick fun fact, I actually attended space camp when I was in elementary school. So this is a good time for all of us just to be space nerds and to hear about this legislation. So with that, um, we are ready to begin our first bill hearing, and I will now open the hearing on SB 52. This measure requires the establishment of a program for awarding a dark sky designation to certain sky, certain sites in the state. And will the bill presenter, Lieutenant Governor Kate Marshall, please proceed when you are ready. Thank you. Uh, I, I greatly appreciate it, um, Chair Donate and uh, committee members. Thank you for having us um, uh, and, and thank you for the work that you are doing. Um, Late last fall, my office was contacted by Colin Robertson, who is the director of the Office of uh, Outdoor Recreation, and I am the chair of the advisory board that, over, that uh, provides input uh, to the director. Um, he wanted to discuss the topic of creating a voluntary state-level dark skies designation in Nevada. I, I was uh, immediately captivated 
Um, as you know, I'm also chair of tourism and in that position, I travel all over Nevada uh, and, and myself and my staff have really had the opportunity to see the wonderful asset that Nevada has in terms of our dark skies. Um, we have some of the darkest skies in the country uh, and um, if you, uh, as an example, if you go to Caliente, you can see the Milky Way with the naked eye. For those of you who live in Vegas, it is not that long of a drive. Um, in Tonopah, we, we help the uh, city of Tonopah um, uh, get some signs. Uh, and I want to thank NDOT for helping us with that to their dark sky park um, that would be lit up at night. Uh, we have been to a ranch in Beatty uh, where they have just wonderful dark skies that people come and see. Uh, so it, it really is an opportunity for us. Um, there has been a lot of work done in Nevada uh, by the Friends of Nevada Wilderness to secure the Massacre Rim Wilderness Study Area in Washoe. It is only the seventh international dark sky sanctuary in the world and it has received a great deal of attention and has really provided an opportunity uh, for scientific and educational um, uh, programs. It also reflects part of our cultural heritage and of course is a place for public enjoyment. Um, there, this increase in attention to Nevada and our dark skies really provides us an opportunity especially during this pandemic, to capitalize on an asset that we have where people can go and uh, be outdoors uh, and still um, hopefully spend a little bit of money um, viewing our dark skies. Uh, so there's a lot of economic potential in this. So I, to talk about the various piece parts of this legislation, I want to turn it over to um, Colin Robertson the Director of Outdoor Recreation, so he can walk, walk us through uh, SB 52. And uh, I will wait for any questions you might have. Thank you again. Thank you so much, Lieutenant Governor Marshall. Good afternoon, Chair Donate and members of the Senate Committee on Natural Resources. For the record, my name is Colin Robertson and I am the Administrator of the New Nevada Division of Outdoor Recreation in the Nevada Department of Conservation and natural resources. It's nice to see you all again. I appreciate the opportunity to introduce and provide testimony in support of Senate Bill 52 today and Lieutenant Governor Kate Marshall's sponsorship of it. In short, in short, SB 52 directs the administrator of the Nevada Division of Outdoor Recreation to establish by regulation a voluntary program for awarding a designation for sites in the state that are especially dark or relatively free of the interference of artificial light and the standards for awarding designation, the categories for designation, and the procedures for applying for designation, reviewing, awarding, and suspending or revoking designation and for appealing suspension or revocation of designation. SB 52 represents an important opportunity to leverage the creation of the Nevada Division of Outdoor Recreation to tie together Nevada's extraordinary outdoor recreation opportunities with the growing importance of outdoor recreation to Nevada's economy and the burgeoning interest in travel tourism and recreation linked to dark night skies. According to the Bureau of Economic Analysis Outdoor Recreation Satellite Account, outdoor recreation accounted for $5.5 billion of the state's economic productivity in 2019, representing 3.1% of the state's gross domestic product that year. Much of this economic value is captured in communities across the state that are gateways to Nevada's most beloved recreation opportunities and places that also enjoy Nevada's darkest skies, roughly aligned with the map of the Basin and Range Dark Sky Cooperative visualized here in slide four. 
Think of communities like Ely and Baker in White Pine County adjacent to Great Basin National Park or the communities of Lincoln County along Highway 93 or Boulder City and Mesquite in Clark County and their proximity to the dark skies of Lake Mead National Recreation Area and Gold Butte National Monument, respectively. As Mitchell and Galloway write in their research article, Dark Sky Tourism, Economic Impacts on the Colorado Plateau Economy, quote, crucially from an economic standpoint, the single most important thing about dark sky tourism is that it, necess it necessitates one or more overnight stays, end quote. In addition to the economic benefits, there are numerous ecological, environmental, and cultural benefits associated with Nevada's dark skies. Preserving darkness helps improve wildlife migration, reduces energy consumption, supports goals associated with the state's climate strategy, underpins important quality of life indicators, and contributes to the preservation of traditional knowledge about the, about the night sky. SB 52 acknowledges Nevada's extraordinary dark night skies as an important public natural resource. The bill establishes their intrinsic value and their importance as a quality of life indicator for Nevadans, as an economic amplifier in terms of dark sky tourism, and as an ecologically, ast astronomically, and environmentally vital natural resource. Finally, I'd like to introduce for the record, a letter of collective support for SB 52 from 25 organizations, businesses, and individuals across the state, expressing their support for the bill and its objectives. The, the letter has been mailed to, uh, mailed, emailed to LCB um, and signatories to that letter include the following. Sharon Netherton from Friends of Nevada Wilderness, Christy Cabrera from the Nevada Conservation League, Rachel Bergren from Get Outdoors Nevada in Las Vegas, George Galt from the City of Mesquite City Council, Jill Lagan from the Boulder City Chamber of Commerce, Matt Brubeck from Main Street Gardnerville, Caroline McIntosh from Ely and the White Pine Main Street Association, Kyle Horvath from the White Pine County Tourism and Recreation, Ashley Pipkin from Basin and Range Dark Sky Cooperative, Megan Wolf from Patagonia, Marsha Hurd from the Lincoln County Authority on Tourism, Paul Bogard, the author of The End of Night, Jose Witt of Southern Nevada Conservancy, Jocelyn Torres from the Conservation Lands Foundation, Elizabeth Woolsey from the Baker Area Citizens Advisory Board, Russell Kuhlman from the Nevada Wildlife Federation, Brian Beffert from the Sierra Club Toyave Chapter, Mauricia Baca from the Nature Conservancy, the Nevada Outdoor Business Coalition, Sherry Phillips from Great Basin Business and Tourism Council in Baker, Nevada, Jennifer Ann from One Source Network, Jim Stanger of the Friends of Sloan Canyon and the Friends of Walking Box Ranch, Kurt Hoagie from Reno Typographers Incorporated, and Jim Boone from Desert Wildlife Consultants in Las Vegas. I'd also like to acknowledge Nevada photographers Kurt Kuznicki, Jeff Sullivan, and Chip Caroon for their beautiful images of Nevada's dark skies featured in this presentation. And with that overview, Chair Donyate, I am happy to answer any questions you and the committee may have. Uh, and thank you very much for the opportunity to present to you today. Thank you, Mr. Robertson and Lieutenant Governor for your presentations. Um, at this time, do any of my committee members have any questions? That Being none. Um, okay. Uh, well, seeing uh, no comments at this time from my committee members, um, let's go ahead and move on with uh, hearing testimony in support of SB 52. As a reminder, we will be limiting all testifiers to two minutes each. Testifiers are encouraged to summarize their positions and submit more com comprehensive testimony in writing. Uh, BPS, is there anyone on the line who would wish to provide support testimony at this time? Thank you, Mr. Chair. To testify in support on Senate Bill 52, please press star nine now to take your place in the queue.
Caller with the last three digits, 523. Please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Good afternoon. My name is Tom Clark. That's T-O-M-C-L-A-R-K. I'm testifying today on behalf of the Nevada Outdoor Business Coalition. Uh, thank you to the Lieutenant Governor and to our Administrator, Colin Robertson, for bringing forward this piece of legislation. Uh, you had heard the long list of names that are on the support letter, and the Nevada Outdoor Business Coalition is one of those. I also serve as the president of the Friends of Black Rock High Rock, which is the large national conservation area north of Reno, most famous for that little event called Burning Man. Well, when it's not Burning Man, it is a beautiful, beautiful place to go visit and to uh, explore. And I tell my friends here in Northern Nevada that if you're starting to feel down because of this pandemic, take a little drive out to the Black Rock Desert and look up because it is just absolutely amazing what you will see. This particular piece of legislation we're very much in support of because of the uh, purposes and reasons that were stated previously. And I very much encourage your support. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Caller with the last three digits, 685. Please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Good afternoon, Chair Donate and members of the committee. For the record, my name is Daniel Perot, spelled D-A-N-I-E-L-P-I-E-R-R-O-T-T. -T, with our gentleman partner that I'm testifying in support of SB 52 on, my, on behalf of my client, the Nevada Northern Railway. Railway Foundation. The Nevada Northern Railway Foundation's mission is to present and preserve the history of short line railroads and mining in Nevada. Since its creation, the foundation has raised over $33 million that is invested in the Nevada Northern Railway historic landmark complex located in the city of Ely. In 2020 alone, our members donated over $1.25 million in hopes of preserving operations of the complex. Prior to the ongoing pandemic, we saw approximately 28,000 tourists a year, and our foundation is committed to offering guests unique once-in-a-lifetime experiences. The most popular activity that we offer is the Great Basin Star Train in conjunction with Great Basin National Park. The Great Basin Star Train has received incredible coverage that has been featured in the LA Times, Travel and Leisure, twice on CBS This Morning, and one episode was titled American Wonders. Our guests apart the station late in the evening are given an opportunity to view the night sky from free from light pollution and artificial light an experience that allows our guests to view the night sky in its purest state. As a registered National Historic Landmark, we strongly believe that SB 52 will give us the opportunity to be awarded a dark-like designation that will further increase tourism in rural northern Nevada. For these reasons, we are in support of SB 52. Thank you for your time. Caller with the last three digits, 463. Please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. My name is Nick Christensen, N-I-C-K-C-H-R-I-S-T-E-N-S-O-N. I'm a volunteer member of the Sierra Club's Legislative Committee, a longtime amateur astronomer, and a former student of astrophysics. On behalf of the Sierra Club and our more than 30,000 members and supporters statewide, I'm speaking today in support of SB 52. Nevada has more acreage of high-quality dark sky spaces than any other state in the lower 48. This is a precious natural resource that Nevada should both conserve and use to our citizens' benefit. In particular, Nevada's dark skies attract tourists, which supports our economy and becomes increasingly valuable as the rest of our country becomes ever more light-polluted. Many people growing up these days, especially those from disadvantaged backgrounds, have never seen the Milky Way or experienced the majesty of a true nighttime dark sky. As cities, suburbs, and exurbs continue to encroach on our wilderness areas, preserving dark sky spaces provides excellent educational opportunities as well as a tie to our heritage. For these reasons and the reasons uh, stated by other folks on this call, uh, we, er we support SB 52 and we urge you to support this bill. Thank you for your time.
Caller with the last three digits, 155. Please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. For the record, my name is Christy Cabrera and I am the Policy and Advocacy Director for the Nevada Conservation League. NCL is in strong support of SB 52 and we would like to thank the Lieutenant Governor and the Office of Outdoor Recreation for bringing this legislation forward. SB 52 acknowledges that Nevada's extraordinary dark skies are an important natural resource in our state and should be celebrated, valued, and protected. Nevada has more true dark sky places than any other state in the lower 48, and Massacre Rim in Washoe County is home to one of only 14 dark sky sanctuaries in the world. This bill will help protect those dark spaces and create a state-level program to award dark sky designations, which would complement the designations that are granted by the International Dark Sky Association. Protecting these spaces will also benefit wildlife as light pollution has been shown to disrupt migration patterns and other behaviors. Aside from being a precious natural resource, Nevada's dark skies can contribute to the growth of our state's outdoor recreation-based economy. As more and more Nevadans are turning to outdoor recreation during the pandemic, our dark skies can be a unique driver for our economy, especially as we continue to recover from COVID-19. Encouraging the promotion and protection of our dark skies will benefit conservation efforts, wildlife, tourism, and our economy, all while solidifying Nevada as a dark sky destination. We urge your support on this piece of legislation. Thank you. Just as a reminder, we are currently on support testimony on Senate Bill 52. If you have recently joined the call and would like to testify in support, Please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Caller with the last three digits, 484. Please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Hello, my name is Ashley Pipkin. That's A-S-H-L-E-Y-P-I-P-K-I-N. I am the current coordinator of the Basin and Range Dark Sky Cooperative, and I would like to provide a comment in support of SB 52. I'll start by explaining, as many other callers have today, that the United States is losing access to pristine night skies. As artificial light increases across the world, there are many places on the map where you look up at the nighttime sky and only see a handful of stars. Here in Nevada, we have the best natural night sky left in the lower 48. In Nevada, you can look up at the night sky and see thousands and thousands of stars, the planets of our solar system, and the beauty of our very own Milky Way galaxy. As clearly as someone staring at the night sky could have seen it 100 or 1,000 years ago. This is an incredibly rare resource in the US and people are seeking out this experience more and more as it becomes a rare occurrence in many Americans own backyards. Nevada's natural night nice sky, like the many other amazing natural resources in our state is prized. Our night nice sky attracts tourists, outdoor recreationists, astronomy enthusiasts, and provides inspiration and education opportunities. But this amazing asset most special in our state does not get the recognition and is not celebrated as it should be, especially by those outside of the state. When most people think of Nevada, they think of the gaming and entertainment industry that is mostly a draw in Washoe and Clark counties. By supporting SB 52, we're not only providing the well-deserved notoriety that Nevada should receive for its exceptional night sky, we are also saying that as a state, the night sky of rural Nevada is important to us. We are drawing tourism to rural communities while greatly adding value to the experience of all visitors and residents within the state by sharing and uniting under the beauty of the night sky. Thank you and the committee for its time. Caller with the last three digits, 488. Please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. 
Good afternoon. My name is Jennifer Ann, J-E-N-N-I-F-E-R-A-N-N, and I am the owner and CEO of One Source Network. I would like to thank the Lieutenant Governor and those who brought this bill forward. I am a born and raised Nevadan who loves the outdoors just as any Nevadan who has Nevada flowing through their veins. One of the joyful memories I get to share with my three young boys, something that I also got to enjoy as a young girl in rural Nevada, is looking up and gazing at our beautiful stars, a, sy a system that reminds me that we are all connected, a system that reminds us that we all came from the same source. No matter what that source may be, no matter what we may call it, that is the source of what I named my company after, One Source Network. It is also why, the, why my primary work as a consultant is an environmental consultant, to help raise the education around how everyday citizens can stand up and protect the environment that we love so much, so we can pass on memories that we loved as children to our children and beyond. According to the IDA, for the air quality, it is estimated that at least 30% of all outdoor lighting in the U.S. alone is wasted, primarily by lights that aren't shielded. That adds up to about 3.3 billion that release 21 million metric tons of carbon dioxide per year. When you compare that to the U.S. energy information with the administration estimated last year in 2018, that it was 5.1 billion metric tons of energy related carbon dioxide well 21 million may not be 5.1 billion but that is adding up the lights are adding up so i know as an individual citizen and a business owner i want to do my part in lowering these emissions and be able to allow my children to enjoy these nevada skies let alone invite let alone invite these families all over the country to see our beautiful national parks, to look up at these dark skies and be connected once again on a deeper level once this pandemic is over. This is why my company, One Source Network, and myself support the SB 52 bill, and I encourage you to do the same. Thank you. Caller with the last three digits, 034. Please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Good afternoon, Chairman and members of the Senate Committee. My name is Jill Lagan, J-I-L-L-L-A-G-A-N, CEO of the Boulder City Chamber of Commerce. I am in support of SB 52 and Dark Sky Tourism. Boulder City, as the gateway to the Lake Mead National Recreation Area, has been blessed to experience and treasure the open recreational space that allows for great play during the day and amazing non-lighted, polluted skies by night. As we have had many stargazing events in our area and know it draws people from all over Southern Nevada, we are keenly aware of what a special activity this is and truly enjoy educating others of the beauty and wonder dark skies provide. We are grateful for the quality of life night sky viewing brings to our residents and guests and would be most appreciative to have available a program with set standards and guidelines to maintain in our community in order to participate, appreciate, and advertise a dark sky designation. We support the Nevada Division of Outdoor Recreation in their efforts and thank you for your consideration. Caller with the last three digits, 656. Please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and maybe begin. Hi, for the record, Will Pregman, W-I-L-L-P as in Peter, R-E-G-M-A-N. I am the communications director with Battleborn Progress here on behalf of them and on behalf of our 20,000 plus subscriber network. We rise today in support of SB 52. Last session, we advocated for the bill to establish the Division of Outdoor Recreation within the State Department. And this bill would direct that division to give a dark sky designation to specific outdoor areas and reserves in Nevada. Dark night skies are an important natural resource to be protect 
protected, areas free of light pollution, support natural ecosystems for, for outdoor recreation, tourism opportunities, and aid scientific discovery by supporting astronomical research. Nevada already has several dark sky designations that bring natural, cultural, and economic value, value to our state. One example is Ely's Northern Nevada Railway, Great Base, and Star Train, an internationally renowned dark sky designation. This bill, SB 52, would give the Division of Outdoor Recreation the ability to set these designations to bolster our outdoor recreation economy and preserve the natural ecosystem of those areas. The public education on the importance of dark skies as a natural and cultural resource will also further Nevada's advancement in environmental science to keep our state on the cutting edge of conservation and supporting a robust outdoor recreation economy. We thank Lieutenant Governor Marshall for bringing this bill and thank the committee for hearing it today and urge the members to consider passing it. Thank you for your time. As a reminder, we are currently on support testimony on Senate Bill 52. If you have recently joined the call and would like to testify in support, please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Caller with the last three digits, 564. Please slowly state and spell your name for the record. You will have two minutes and may begin. Good afternoon and thank you so much. My name is Chelsea Hand. For the record, that's C-H-E-L-S-E-Y-H-A-N-D. I'm the Outreach and Program Coordinator of Great Basin Resource Watch. And on behalf of Great Basin Resource Watch, I'd like to voice our support of SB 52 for the many purposes and reasons stated previously. Um, I'd also like to add that we're interested in protecting these dark skies from the intrusion of additional light and are interested in a mechanism that would aid communities in protecting their dark sky characteristics potentially through a permitting process that would require an entity to obtain an additional light permit if changing the existing character of a valley. Um, for all of these reasons, we urge you to support this bill. Um, thanks so much for your time. As a reminder, we are currently on support testimony on Senate Bill 52. If you have recently joined the call and would like to testify in support, please press star nine now, now to take your place in the queue. Chair, there, it, there are no more callers in support at this time. Thank you. And thank you all for uh, testifying in support. Next, we will hear testimony in opposition. To testify in opposition on Senate Bill 52, please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Chair, there are no callers in opposition at this time. Great, thank you. Uh, and last, is there anyone wishing to testify in neutral of the bill? Thank you, Chair. To testify in neutral on Senate Bill 52, please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Chair, there are no callers in neutral at this time. Great, thank you so much for that. Um, last I checked, the public opinion poll, oh, so before I proceed, I, I will now close the hearing on SB 52. So last I checked, um, the public opinion poll, there were more than about 100 people who had posted their support on this bill. So if the committee is willing at this time, I would like to entertain a motion to do pass SB 52 today. Um, do I hear a motion? So moved by uh, Vice Chair Scheibel. Thank you. So Senator Roy Cachillo. Motion to do pass by Senator Scheibel and then seconded by Senator Cochia. Um, Will at this time, will the committee secretary please take the roll call vote when you're ready? 
And again, for the committee members, uh, vote either yes or no to be clear on the record. Thank you. Senator Brooks? Yes. Senator Goykachia? Yes. Senator Hansen? Yes. Senator Scheibel? Yes. Chair Donate? Both the record reflect that I am also a yeah. So with that, the motion passes. And uh, just for clarification's sake, I would be happy to handle the floor statement. Thank you all to our presenters and to my committee. So with that, we will now proceed to Senate Bill 23. I will now open the hearing on SB 23. This measure revises the provisions relating to the State Conservation Commission. Uh, will the bill presenter, Mr. Dominique Echigoyen, Deputy Director and State of the State Department of Conservation and Natural Resources, please proceed when you are ready, sir. Thank you, Chair. I'm going to share my screen. And I hope that has worked properly. Good afternoon, Chair Donatier, members of the Natural Resources Committee. My name is Dominique Echigoyen, and I'm a Deputy Director with the Nevada Department of Conservation and Natural Resources. I appreciate the opportunity to present today on Senate Bill 23. Um, I hope this bill will be the simplest proposal you consider this legislative session as SB 23 proposes to move a single word in statute. Existing law creates the State Conservation Commission and establishes three areas from which the governor shall appoint members to the commission. These three areas consist of counties and the area boundary lines follow the county lines exactly. SB 23 would move Mineral County from Area 3 to Area 2 in statute. And here you can see on the slideshow the area boundaries. Area 1 is in green, Area 2 is in yellow, and Area 3 is in light blue. Um, where Hawthorne is, you can see Mineral County currently is in Area 3 and is blue. The purpose of SB 23 is to resolve a boundary conflict that currently exists between the Mason Valley Conservation District boundary and the area boundary. The Mason Valley Conservation District boundary in light blue on this third slide encompasses both a portion of Lyon County as well as the entirety of Mineral County, thereby straddling both areas two and three. You can see that current area boundary line in the hard red and you can see how it bisects Lyon County portion on one side and the Mineral County portion on the other side of the Mason Valley Conservation District. This boundary conflict is confusing and it has caused the Nevada Association of Conservation Districts to recommend the governor appoint a Mason Valley Conservation District supervisor to the State Conservation Commission to represent Area 2, only to later learn that the supervisor was ineligible because the supervisor actually resided in the Area 3 portion of the Mason Valley Conservation District. So by transferring Mineral County from Area 3 to Area 2, we will resolve the existing boundary conflict. In the proposal, you see the red dotted line would be the new boundary line. SB 23 would align the Mason Valley Conservation District boundary with the area boundary, thereby allowing Mason Valley Conservation District supervisors to represent the entirety of the Mason Valley Conservation District at the area level and on the State Conservation Commission, regardless of where that member happens to live within the Conservation District. This boundary change would also promote congruency in locally led conservation and support efforts to better manage the resources across the Walker River watershed. And in this final slide, you can see the area boundaries as they would exist should SB 23 be passed into law. This completes my testimony and I'd be happy to, happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Echigoyen, for your presentation. Um, at this time, do I have any questions or comments? Senator Hansen? Yes. Senator Hansen, go for it. Thanks, Chair. Uh, Dominique, how are you today, sir? Uh, I, I represent Mineral County. I just want to make sure, was there any, I mean, you guys talked to county commissioners or anything, are they, is there any, any backlash at all on it? Seems like a totally reasonable thing, and I just wanted to double check that the the local folks were consulted before you guys made this decision. Great question. Dominique, get you going for the record. 
my understanding is that both the State Conservation Commission, including the chair, uh, support this, as well as the supervisors and representatives of the conservation district. I can tell you I did not reach out to the commissioners because I hadn't heard any concern. I'd only heard support for the ability to manage this entire Walker River watershed as one unit and to um, align these boundaries in a way that would resolve the confusion. Um, so to my knowledge, there is no concern. Very good. Just want to follow up, make sure. Sounds like a very reasonable thing to do. Thanks. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, are there any other questions from any other committee members? Seeing none, uh, I think we're ready to go ahead and move on to testimony. So next, we will hear testimony in support of SB 20. As a reminder, we will be limiting all testifiers to two minutes each. Testifiers are encouraged to summarize their positions and submit more comprehensive testimony in writing. BPS, is there anyone on the line wishing to provide support testimony? Thank you, Mr. Chair. To testify in support on Senate Bill 23, please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Chair, there are no callers in, in support at this time. Great, thank you. Uh, at this time, we will hear testimony in opposition, if there are any. Thank you, Chair. To testify in opposition on Senate Bill 23, please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Chair, there are no callers in opposition at this time. Great, thank you. And last but not least, is there anyone wishing to testify in neutral on the bill? Thank you, Chair. To testify in neutral on Senate Bill 23, please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Chair, there are no callers in neutral at this time. Great, thank you. So just as a uh, background for my committee members, I had planned to hold this bill um, for our future work session, but considering that we didn't reach a lot of opposition, uh, I will, at this moment in time, I will close the hearing on SB 23. And now that that has been closed, um, I'm interested in seeing if anyone would like to entertain a motion to, pass, to do pass um, SB 23. I would be happy to make that motion, uh, Mr. Chair. Great, thank you. So motion to do pass by Senator Hansen. Uh, is there a second? Second by Senator Gorkachia. Thank you, Senator Gorkachia. So uh, at this time, will the committee, uh, are there any questions or comments regarding the motion that has been made? Seeing none, uh, will the committee secretary please take the roll call vote at this time? Senator Brooks. Here, uh, excuse me, yes. Senator Goikachia. Yes. Senator Hansen. Yes. Senator Scheibel. Yes. Chair Donate. And I am a yes, thank you. So with that, the motion passes and I would happy to delegate this responsibility to Senator Hansen to do the floor statement since uh, this is in his district if he accept that invitation. So thank you uh, to my committee members. And with that, um, I think we are good to go straight to a uh, public comment. So at this time, I will now call for a public comment. Please remember to limit your comments to two minutes. EPS staff, is there any public comment at this time? Chair, thank you. The public line is open and working. There are no callers at this time. Let's give it a few seconds just in case if there's a lag time. Certainly, seconds. please stand by.
Chair, the public line is still open and working and there are no callers at this time. Thank you, BPF, for that. Okay, so at this time, I will close public comment. Um, before I adjourn, are there any questions or comments from any of my members? Being none. Uh, Chair Donate, I have, I have a comment. Senator Brooks, go for it. Thank you for being so efficient of moving bills to the committee. Great. Well, thank you. And thank you guys for being. This is a comment box. from Senator Goikichia. I've got some I hope we move just as fast. I will take that into consideration, sir. Um, so before we move it, we move forward. So again, just for, as a reminder for everyone, our next meeting is Thursday, February 18th at 3.30 p.m. And we will be hearing two bills, which is Senate bills 53 and 65. So given uh, our fast responses and everything that has gone pretty well this meeting, uh, I now declare this meeting adjourned. Thank you.